Welcome to my Five Senses Experience podcast, the place where we explore our five senses, what we see, hear, smell, touch, and what we taste. I'm Kat, and I am your podcast host. I'm super excited about today's episode, not just because both of my guests are actually friends of mine, but because they are very inspiring artists in, yes, somehow different yet combined ways. Ironically, their nicknames are me and Mo. Um, Milena enjoyed several years of dance education. She has been teaching dance classes for many years, studied professional dance, and she still continues dancing, but she's also enrolled now in studies of sociology and sign language. Moritz has been in the film industry for over 12 years now. He became known through a German children's show and he has performed as an actor in many other German films and TV shows. His biggest and most international role was as Magnus in the mystery series Dark on Netflix. In addition to acting, Moritz is a musician, both with a single artist as well as with his band. Today we talk all about creativity and energy, about experiencing our senses and how this is part of a personal journey. And they give you some advices on how to become more aware of your senses, how to be more mindful. But now it's time. Enough talking from me. Let's dive deep into this podcast episode. Senses Experience podcast to both of you. I'm so excited to have you today. Thank you for having us. It's actually very unique having you two here in English because usually we communicate in German. So it's very interesting. Yes, yes. How are both of you doing? How is everything being an artist during this crazy time? It's different. Um, just yesterday we had a call with my uh, dance school and we were talking about the current situation because, you know, there's a lot of changes going on and it's just, I don't know, you, you know, you're not certain about anything right now. It's mm -hmm. like you can't really plan the future and especially as a freelancer, it's, I mean, we're used to the situation, but right now it's a lot more complicated because you don't have any security at all so things are changing really quickly and you don't know when you can start applying again for stage jobs and stuff because you don't know when the stages are going to be open again so it's kind of a difficult situation but it also you know opens up new a whole new world like all those life dance classes you find on instagram now or all those connection videos for artists and everyone's dancing in their kitchen. It's like, it's a lot of new, new input and uh, yeah, different. We're all learning. It's a journey, I guess. Very briefly, what are current projects that you guys are working on? Um, for me at the moment, uh, uh, I do a lot of my uh, new music stuff. I'm working on a new EP I'm going to release uh, this year. And um, right now, so I'm, I'm, I'm writing from home, I'm writing on guitar. Uh, um, sometimes I'm in the studio and I'm recording. And um, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm planning music videos for myself and for other artists. And so at the beginning of this Corona thingy, it, it didn't change too much for me because I was working from home anyways and was editing and... I don't know, it's part of my job to always, uh, from time to time, I'm, I'm spending a lot of time at home and being just being creative in front of my computer and planning or uh, doing post-production and stuff like that. So um, that was weird because like the whole world seemed to, to change from one day to another. But for me, nothing really changed because I was at home anyways, working like on the same stuff I was working on before. But right now, um, yeah, it's absolutely weird because you, you can't go to the cinema, you can't celebrate art, gigs were canceled and all that stuff. And right now I'm trying to figure out how to shoot music videos uh, with uh, this current or in this current situation. Yeah. Um, for me, um, right now, there's not that many big projects going on, obviously, because you can't really do a lot. But... Actually, there has been some people contacting me from some jobs that I've done before or that I did before, like to send them a solo from me and then they're gonna have like a ranking and then you can win some money. So it's kind of like little projects, little 
jobs and it's, you know, you, they give you topics and then you create something for that. And right now I'm just trying to figure out this whole video teaching stuff because it's very different. Like, I mean, we're going to come to all those senses stuff, but it's so much different to be alone in your kitchen or in your living room, wherever you have room to dance and then trying to animate people <laughs> to entertain them yes. and to spread some good vibes. Yes. So everyone wants to move and wants to learn and um, without having any energy coming back. So that's really exhausting right now. And I'm just trying to figure out how I can, you know, put myself in the position that I'm having good energy and I'm going to send this through this device. So, so that's kind of my big project right now. Right. Um, yeah. And then I'm planning some concept videos also from some choreographies I'm doing to have some new videos. Still. Nice. So you already mentioned the creativity and the energy. If we think back to normal times <laughs> and talk about in general, um, you both are very artistic, creative, and passionate. So how do you get the inspiration for your work? Is it personally? Is it through your environment? Uh, something that inspires you? Are you following current trends? Where do you get your input from? Mm, for me, it really depends on, um, uh, on, on which tools I use, probably, because um, if I'm performing music or if I'm writing music, then it's most of the time it's pretty personal and I'm, I'm always like the, the centerpiece that, that starts with the first idea of, of what the story is going to be about or, or, or how it's going to sound like if it's going to be sad or happy, uplifting or whatsoever. So it really depends on my, my mood and my, yeah, my everyday life and what I'm confronted with. And it can be just like in, in front of my doorstep or it can be something I watch on the news or it can be, that I'm heartbroken or whatsoever. And I just, I just try to, to, to most of the times let it out as direct as possible. Right. So if you transfer um, your emotions or like your experience into your work uh, for music, do you start with the lyrics? Do you start with the, like the sound? How is that usually how you go along? Mm -hmm. well, usually I, I start with, um, with sound, with a melody. So I play around with, with, with my guitar or with my banjo or any instrument. And I just, I don't know, that creates something, a mood. And I'm, yeah, I'm somehow transformed into, yeah, a new way where I can just get rid of things that, that bother me. Mm -hmm. um, but also sometimes I just start writing um, and I do everything in English. And it feels weird because it's not obviously not my mother tongue and it's, um, it's not my every, language I use every day. So uh, it's not the language I dream in or the language I yeah, use every day. But it somehow gives me a little bit of protection. So if I, if I write something down, which um, is meant to be absolutely true um, to myself, um, it helps to, to use this, this other language to get it done, yeah. So it gives you some distance if you use English instead of German, which is your mother tongue? Probably, yeah. Oh, interesting. interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably it helps to, to be confronted with the inner feelings. <laughs> like, yeah. It also helps to perform, sing about secrets or, or whatever is going on on my mind. And uh, For example, singing it to my, to my mother and she doesn't really understand. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, she, she can, yeah, but... Yeah, it's also about using metaphors and stuff. How is it for you, me? Like, how do you transfer your inspiration and your experiences into your work? Mm, it also always depends on what kind of dance I'm creating, especially, like, for example, when I'm doing the solo that I was just talking about, then they gave me some topic. Or if I'm having a choreographer's job, then, of course, I'm having a topic or I'm having a story behind where I have to, like, follow along. But if I'm only choreographing for myself or for my classes, I'm very free in what I do. I only have like the style of the dance I'm teaching and then I can find music of that way. And then I'm usually going along with what the music is saying. So I'm listening a lot to the lyrics and how the, what, what kind of feeling the music is giving. Mm -hmm. um, but if I'm dancing for myself or if I'm improvising, for example, which I do a lot these times and which I really, really enjoy, um, 
I try to just listen to what my body wants to say because a lot of times we're thinking with our heads and our brains, but I feel like there's a lot of pressure or there's a lot of things we want to think and we want to um, create, especially when you're an improvisation dancer. You always have some kind of, you know, visual in your mind that you want to to give to the people or that you want to show like I have high legs or I can turn three periods. Like if you're on an audition, it's always like, show us what you got. But then there are also these people who say, no, we want to see the you in the, in the movement. And we don't want to see what kind of special things you can do. because mm -hmm. It's like everyone can learn technique, but the thing that makes you unique is when you put your inner self out but that's also when you put yourself in the most vulnerable places. So Absolutely. it's kind of, uh, yeah, you kind of have to find a good middle way to not make yourself too vulnerable, especially at an audition, um, but to also be true to yourself. Mm -hmm. I mean, that sounds really cheesy right now, but <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Being very pure. And I love how you said that it's also, I mean, it's a sort of way to capture and to transform your own experiences and your own personal work because it's like, it's, you know, down to you in the end. And I love how you said that for the dancing, you focus on the audio, on the sound, what kind of emotions are being transferred. And this is where actually Mo starts his music very often. So, you know, there's a certain connection, how it's all interacted. Uh, you already talked about that we use our brain too often to interpret things, to overthink. And we tend to say in this podcast or about this whole project, brain off, senses on. So that's the whole idea about five senses journey. Um, we do have five senses, obviously. What we see, hear, smell, touch, and what we taste. Which senses do you think you apply the most and how? Um, for me, I think mostly feeling. Because in dance, the first thing that comes to mind would probably be, yeah, hearing, because you listen to music and then you start moving. But for me, it's more about the feeling sensation, because if you go into the contemporary or the modern type of dance, they move a lot without music or anything that you're hearing. Mm -hmm. They listen to their body, which is a feeling again. So it's, it's more about the, the fields and about the touch and about how the room feels. But I guess it depends on what kind of dance you're using. Because if you're doing salsa, then obviously you're not dancing without music. You're going with the rhythm. Right. So and it's I a lot of you, it's a lot of hearing, but it's also, for me, it's a lot about feeling. And I can also imagine that's a difference if it's for yourself, which senses you apply, as well as when you think about the audience. Mm -hmm. Because for the audience, I imagine that for them, it's mainly the vision, right? So for them, it, you know, you have to be on point if you dance in a group. The one should be a bit delayed or anything. So I guess there it also differs a lot if you're the actual artist, the actual dancer or the audience. Yes, of course. How is it for you, Mo? Uh, what was the question about this? Uh, about which, the senses. Which senses I use the most? Uh -huh. Well, in terms of this brain thingy, which you, which you switch on or off? The brain off, uh, senses uh, the, on. The brain <laughs> off, senses on. I think um, it could be feeling as well. Uh, I thought I just thought about that because um, right now I'm really um, putting my mind to 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 sound mm -hmm. um, as we are working on new music and we we really try to listen carefully each time we we start in the studio and work on a on a song over and over again and try to really abstract everything that is in there and um find other music that we can relate to or or find a different sound which we like or whatsoever so it's uh, it's really nothing well but it should be in the end something you just put on and you can just give yourself to it just listen to it um and for uh, the other thing the the eyes just to see stuff is it's it's a little bit the same thing because i um i'm working in the film industry now for i don't know 12 years or something for mm -hmm. like and um as I, I as I begin to to do my own movies and started directing and um did film studies and and all that you 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 really start carefully um thinking about the the pictures you make and what they can mean and 
every time you watch a movie, you're thinking about how it's done. And so that really changes. But um, about a feeling is uh, probably, I thought about it when, I, when I'm traveling or I'm somewhere having to spend time in a different city and I, I'm, I'm missing home and I'm staying in a hotel or something. Um, it really helps to pick up my guitar or my ukulele or whatever I've got with me. And it's just the feeling of holding it in my hand and um, feeling the strings on my fingertips and everything. Uh, it, it really takes you home and you feel so comfortable with it. And that's probably also just the feeling of holding it and having your hands how you always hold it. And not even the sound, but just like feeling your... Just the touch of yeah. itself, actually. Yeah, yeah. That's quite interesting because you're also, you know, you love to surf as well. So I can imagine even during surfing, you apply the, like, the touch or the feeling even more... Mm -hmm intensely because there it's also about balance and stuff so like from a complete different perspective but that's also where i imagine you bring in the touch or the feeling as well yeah for sure do you think there's a difference or anything like a journey that you have personally experienced i mean you already said that you more tend to go to the interpretation now so when you see something you actually think about it further think about how it's done but do you think you sort of sharpened your senses along the way throughout the years Definitely, yes. For me, at, like when I was a child and I started to dance, then it was just about fun and about meeting friends and about, I don't know, having a good time. But over time, it changed a lot for me, especially when I was in the dance education, it was all about perfection and it was all about serving and doing what they want you to do. And there was really no time to go into the feeling of it or to go deeper and to to start asking yourself okay what does this do to me what what do i feel when i'm dancing what do i what do i experience when i'm mm -hmm. dancing so after i did this dance education and i started to you know find out for myself what's important for me or why i'm doing dance because sometimes you keep forgetting why you're doing what you're doing when i asked myself the question i became more and more aware of what it does to me and then i became more aware of the whole process of okay it makes me feel alive gives me freedom it's my therapy when i'm feeling bad it, it's actually everything for me it's also when a person says that they can dance i'm telling them no because every single person is a mover and for me a dancer is not a dancer when you can do five periods but every person is a dancer because a dancer is a mover. And if you walk, if you see people walking on the street, you can see so many different types of walking and it's so interesting. And I mean, there are whole dance pieces about walking people. It's magic. When I see a person move, it's, I see them dance. It's interesting how you say, you know, just to pause sort of and literally just observing Because these are things that when we walk around, we tend to ignore, we tend to neglect it, right? I never focus on people walking around. But if you actually sit down and take the time to do it, you become aware of that. And only then you become aware of the differences and what it does to people. And then you start, you know, seeing more details, feeling different things and stuff. So, And then try to copy them. It's the best way of finding new ways of moving and of finding your body feel more or make it make it find new ways of moving it's amazing right how is it for you mo because you have very different settings you work in a studio you work in front of the camera you are on stage how do you experience it is there a certain journey yeah but there for sure is um i think there is is a little journey with every character um i'm i'm playing with every character um um, I don't know, I build up something, I find something in my, in my personal life, but also this physically thingy helps. Sometimes it's just, I don't know, yeah, a certain type of walk or it can be just, just one typical movement you always do, how you hold your hand all the time or anything and, and, and really can help you to transform. Yeah, I, I thought about this sharpening senses thing, uh, actually, uh, just about surfing you mentioned surfing and that really is a journey that everyone experiences while they learn to surf because the first time you step into the water you really don't know what the hell you're doing and when a wave is approaching and when to start totally. paddling and when to get up and it's just too much 
and uh, it really takes a long time and you learn every time you're out in the ocean and you learn every time it doesn't matter how good or bad the conditions are you every time learn about the wind about the wave about uh, everything mm -hmm. and how it all comes together and so it's really interesting to see that the best surfers are not immediately the ones who are the the fittest and the strongest or the I don't know the one, even the one who, who can probably balance the best whatsoever. But um, it really, really helps to to know your surroundings and to know um, what does it mean as a set of wave is approaching. Is the first, the second one, the best? All that comes together, and all that is different in each um, location and weather conditions and so on. So, experience. Yeah, I can totally relate to that one. I mean, my surfing experience so far, you know, I didn't really get the touch of the waves yet, I would say. So <laughs> I managed to get it once, I think. Where? Yeah. Uh, I think that was like 10 years ago in New Zealand or so. Like I've been oh, trying yeah. to be surfing here and there, but, you know, yeah. don't even mention it. <laughs> but you already talked about, you know, bringing the emotions and stuff over to the audience um it can be live it can be on camera wherever both of you have experienced both versions um so the question is there do you express your own movements and your own experiences let's say more dramatically so that they see it even more that they feel it more do you speak even clearer than before um for me it depends on what kind of situation i'm in filming a music video then it also depends on how much space I have to move but usually you want to see more of the feelings or you want to see more of the of the face or you want to see different emotions so you don't have to go all crazy in front of a, a camera mm -hmm. and if I'm on stage it depends a lot on how big the audience is like for example I did a musical theater once and there were lots and lots of people. So if I dance like this, they would never see what my right finger would do. And they probably would also not uh, get, the, get the feeling of mm -hmm. why. So I would have to be bigger so they can visual, visually see me. I don't know. So right. they can see yeah, me. like over dramatic sort of to actually yeah, recognize the movement. in some way. Mm -hmm. But. Um, I did a dance theater once and it was a smaller group of people. I think there were only like 50 people fitting in there. And there you can really do a lot also with um, just your face or with smaller movements. Because if it's a smaller room, then it's easier to get the energy and to get the atmosphere. So it really depends on how big the space is and how, how much, yeah, on how much you have to move or have to give. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Probably uh, for me, it's the same uh, performing live. And we had a really weird gig in January with my whole band. And we traveled through all of Germany to get there. And it was all really nice. Um, but I don't know, it was some sort of event where uh, the people who were there, they weren't there for the music. You know, it was free mm. champagne and whatsoever. And <laughs> I was happy to play there. It was at a film festival. And, um, and uh, we had a good time. And we were playing for an hour or something. They all started, and as soon as we started, um, it, it took I don't know ten minutes or something, and everybody left. And it was it was a huge space, and everyone just like it was anyway probably too big for that crowd. But at least if, I mean if everyone was standing just in front of the the stage, it was yeah it, it would have been nice. But um, everyone just sort of went yeah okay, and, and uh, is there some free food or whatsoever? <laughs> so like oh just mumbling God. around, and everyone was talking, and you know standing. Uh, I don't know, five meters in front of me at, at, with, a, with back to the stage um, it's sort of a, like these little big high tables. And, um, and it was weird. And, and the first half an hour was, was really hard and terrible. And I always liked to, uh, wanted to get like a few, just a few people who, who started looking at me just to, to like, yeah, transport something like, okay, come on, listen to me. And, and then, you know, everything went worse and worse. And I, and I, uh, I got, the, got the wrong chords and anything, something fell on stage. And I don't know, it went worse and worse. <laughs> and then uh, had, it, it absolutely turned around um, at the middle of our set where um, we started playing a really um, a quiet song, just me and my guitar. And um, 
uh, my band got off stage and they were standing just in front of the stage and they were listening and then clapping and saying, yeah, we like it. And then they got back on stage and we went like, fuck it. No one's listening. You know, we can do whatever we want. And we just started playing for ourselves. And then, um, yeah, then it was loose and it was cool and we had a good time. This sounds such yeah. a nightmare, but I can imagine, of course, not every crowd is always the same, right? So you've got to take up the mood and the atmosphere and make the most out of it. And yeah. I guess that's also how you, yeah. as live artists, need to then perform and adapt accordingly. And yeah, probably, but I was going off stage and t- uh, telling my, my, my lead guitarist, who's way more, um, he has played more shows than me, um, and telling him like yeah you know maybe it's an experience i have to go through i'm learning and he said no it's always going to be shit if you play in front of people <laughs> who don't care <laughs> yeah i think this is the exciting part here because it is so different when you do it for yourself in the studio or when you read a script and po- like you know do rehearsals for yourself but if you actually go out and perform live you just see the reaction right so you can imagine everything in advance but how they actually react and how they if they feel it, absolutely not predictable. Talking about being live on stage, um, there is something that combines both of you. Melina, you also study sign language as a side subject at university. And Mo, you had someone doing your concert um, being on stage with sign language. I know it's a really sensitive topic, so we don't want to go into detail, talk about it you know, much because it's really its own language, its own way of communicating and experiencing it. But what would be interesting for me is how you experienced working with them and how you experienced it from yourself, how you adapted your senses accordingly. Mm, I don't know how I adapted um, sort of because I, I always focus on, 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 on the visual stuff as I'm interested in filming and, and all that. Um, but it was just really interesting. We did a tour in, in December and um, uh, I went on tour, on Germany tour with a band and they had that thing where they been working together with deaf people and mm-hmm. um, trying to, yeah, work on uh, how to um, translate the lyrics and the topics and everything into international sign. I think it was international sign language mm-hmm. or German sign language or, or whatsoever. And they, and they had people coming with them on tour and so we immediately had someone um, um, translating my music as well. And it was the first time I really worked with someone who's deaf and um, who, yeah, I don't know, t- translated my, my lyrics. And it was really interesting because, as I told you before, that uh, it really helps me to write in English and, uh, and that I can sing in front of a German crowd and no one gets it. <laughs> I, well, at least that's what I think most of the time, you know. They can see me crying or having a good time or whatsoever. but. They can't really tell what I'm thinking about. It's mm-hmm. English and it's metaphor. Yeah. But um, uh, so that person, Philip, he was, and Angela. So we've been working with, with, with someone who speaks international sign language and, and who, whom I can talk to and with a, with a deaf person who, whose mother tongue it is, the sign language. And that was really interesting um, them to, you know, just focusing on the lyrics and what I'm saying. So with them, I had to really like, um, get over the songs again, um, trying to, to find out what the song is about, giving them enough information so that they can share my story from my point of view, but with their emotions, because they are performing on stage. And so these two have been the, probably the only, or, the most um, the people I open up about my songs, which are not in my band, um, about what I'm singing about. Yeah. Interesting, because they're obviously when you're deaf, you're missing the sense of audio, the sense of hearing, and then it sort of forces you to reconsider your work and translate it in a different way, missing the main part of audio, obviously in music. So, really interesting. What made you choose sign language as a sight subject, me? <laughs> Actually, I was going for psychology, but my um, abitur wasn't good enough. <laughs> so <laughs> it was my third choice. Um, but now I'm very happy that it happened because actually I was just very 
like mesmerized by the language because you know I'm a mover. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think it's very interesting to um, see people talking with their hands. And um, I used to watch this. There's this TV sitcom. I don't know what it's called. Actually, I think it was. It's from New Zealand also or Australia. I'm not oh, sure. really. Uh, yes, and I watched it, and uh, there they were talking in sign language, and I was very interested by it, and then I was like, I have to learn this because it's so amazing and it's so beautiful because I feel like when I see people uh, signing, it kind of also looks like they're dancing a little more than us talking people. So I was very, like, just enjoying to watch them. And then when I started studying it, I found, like, I felt very dumb at first because there are so many aspects that I have never thought of. And um, now I'm very, very happy that I'm studying this so I can kind of get a glimpse of this culture because there's so much more to it. It's not just a language, but it's a whole culture. And there's like so, so much, so much. It is very, very interesting. And I'm very happy that I get the chance to study it. and also. Um, It's kind of funny because when I started studying it at the first, like we're all in my, in my group, we're all hearing people. And when we started studying it, we had to learn how to use our face because facial expression is one of the most important things in uh, signing. It's not all about the hands, but it's a lot about the face and a lot mm -hmm. about what it's mouthing because some moves um, have different meanings and it only depends on what your mouth is saying then you can just understand what it's supposed to mean and we started to practice uh, facial expressions so it was like okay if you say sorry you can say sorry in a hundred different ways like how we say sorry we, sometimes we are screaming i'm so sorry but sometimes we're just saying i'm so sorry like there are so many different ways and it's the same in sign language you can be very very sorry because you did something wrong but you can also be sorry because you're annoyed so there's so many different things and we started to practice these facial expressions and a lot of the people i experienced a lot of the people had trouble to do this because it's kind of act, like acting and i also found it very interesting because when i was in the lecture yes the deaf person who was giving the lecture It was like he was telling a story. He was he was giving me a whole movie because there's so much to see and so much to um, yeah experience when they're talking. And it's kind of funny because they have to act a lot because they have to you know talk about situations about their grandmother and then suddenly they're their grandmother and then they have to talk and act like their grandmother. So it's so interesting. They're the best actors on earth. In my opinion, it's amazing. It's so much like, yeah, so, so inspiring also. What is the sign for, uh, sorry, is it that you like, is it this one you just make? Because I only see you on video, but maybe we can just describe it in words for those listening. Yes, in German sign language, it's, I mean, if you're a right, if you're a right-handed person, you hold up your left hand and the palm is facing downwards. And then you use your right hand to just kind of go in a circle on the top of your hand and you're like sorry <laughs> it's very interesting to observe because while you were explaining it and talking about the different vocals and stuff you actually made the sign the entire time so i could tell you were saying sorry by how you moved your hands <laughs> so i thought i wouldn't already right so you said you're a mover which obviously or as a dancer on your instagram you have one video or one igtv um, which is of you dancing, and I loved it, um, especially because the caption was Awakening Senses. And then it says, White times we are in. Let's go on a little journey to escape the thoughts. Let's find joy in the little things life throws at us. So, what is the journey? What is that one behind? Why this caption? In this song, There are a lot of lyrics about how the person um, doesn't feel good enough or how the person, yes, she, she knows that she's not perfect. She knows that um, 
there was this other person or the, I don't know, it doesn't have to be a person, but there was this thing that she never put first, even though she might have had to do it. And she is kind of in the whole song, she's kind of saying how she's not the perfect person and she knows and she's sorry that she she maybe not have made the right decisions and stuff. So there's a lot of things going on and there are just so many lyrics in there that you can, um, that every person I think can refer to when they're thinking about themselves. And uh, when I started this choreography, it was for a solo performance. And then I really liked the song and I liked the feeling of it because I was really going onto the lyrics, which mm -hmm. usually I don't do. I go onto the lyrics, but I also use a lot of the sounds around. But the song at the beginning, she's really talking. So I was just like doing little movements on the song, on the lyrics. And then I started really liking it and I felt very like I was kind of yeah dancing about myself and about my own feelings and then I started to teach the choreography in my in one of my classes and every time after the class the the students were coming to me and they were saying how thankful they are because there are so many things in this song so many sentences that they can relate to and that they feel like they're dancing their own thoughts out And this is what I love about dancing. If it's not only about, this is my opinion and I'm just going to show you my dance so you can dance how I like to dance. But it, it's the best if they tell you, okay, thank you for this because I kept thinking about my own thoughts or I, I found new ways of interpreting my thoughts. That's what I really like. What was the question again? <laughs> ah, awakening sentences. <laughs> wow. Um, yes. And <laughs> in this... Uh, dance, I think there are a lot of senses combined because you have the audio, you have the lyrics that you're dancing to, then you have the um, you have the visual because it's a music video or it's a video, and uh, then you have a lot of fields because the whole dancing is about feeling. And when I'm touching myself, I'm feeling so many things, and I can, you know, because of touching, I can move so much differently. I can feel the air going through my fingers and then it makes my fingers move differently. So there's so many things that you can feel while dancing. So when I'm dancing, I am awakening my senses a lot. I love this. Maybe to finish off talking about awakening the senses, do you have any advice, for, especially for aspiring artists um, and the listeners, how to awake the senses, how to become more aware of the senses and to transfer your own experiences into your work and your art. A half an hour yoga every day is the way to start. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually, what I'm doing at the moment because there's no it actually much. really helps. I can't go uh, surfing, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you can um, do couch surfing at home, but that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> surfing on the internet. Well, I have to stay in my home, Kada. Can't. <laughs> yeah. uh, um, True. Isn't couch surfing? Uh, anyways, okay. Um, well, I don't know. Yeah, pr yeah. Sport is a good way, probably for for. But don't you say, Milena, for movement? Yes, <laughs> sport is good because sometimes. Yeah, actually, it's good because I was going to say, okay, maybe just sit down and close your eyes and try to focus on what you're feeling. But then maybe you start thinking again. So maybe moving is better. I'm actually mm. not sure. But it's good to find pauses in your life because I found out that I, I am moving a lot from A to B and to C. But when I'm starting to just sit down or to lay down in my bed and just to close my eyes and then I'm, then I'm, I'm finding out what I am really caring about. It's actually pretty sad because I don't really have a lot of time to think about what my problems are. So most of the times they come into my dreams so when I'm waking up I'm just realizing what is actually going on in my brain and heart so maybe take time to find out what is really important and what you want to say to people with your art or what you we want to give to people because there are so many people especially also in the dance scene. I don't know about artists or uh, musicians, but in the dance scene, there are so many people who just do the art because they want to become popular or they want to uh, 
um, I don't know, feel special. And that I think that's not the right way to approach real art. Mm -hmm. Real art is about what you feel and what you want to give to the society. Or maybe you just do it for yourself, but then just do it for yourself and don't do it because you want to have that many views on Instagram or YouTube. So try to focus on that maybe. It sounds good about the about the the pauses you 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 just said about like reflecting yourself and something. I think I think everyone has to find out what works for them. But for me, it is I find maybe these these pauses in a, in a routine. So um, I'm mostly really creative and I don't know um, get, uh, get myself in a mood to where I can listen to whatever is in me and let it out when I when I grab my guitar every day or at least every. Every second day and I pick it up and I just play around with it for half an hour or an hour or longer or three hours and I'm um, and you know if I, if I do it every day it, it can be five or six days a week where I just pick it up and I play the same songs over and over again or nothing comes in my mind and I don't know and there's this one moment then from one day to another where I've just found three new chords or the chords or they're the same chords I play every day but at this day they seem so special just about this really moment where I play them right now and then I feel something and then it's just sometimes it's just one word or it's one sentence. Maybe that sentence is really stupid, but I, I can refer to it later and and then it starts so with the song. And um, for me, it's really to, um, to get to work every day or um, to, to have this routine to also allow myself to fail because I'm trying really, really often to write something, to come up with an idea, to... Yeah, to be creative. And if I'm if I allow myself to fail ninety nine percent of the time, then it's all right to have this one percent here and there where I just find a little sparkle, something that moves me, something that I find unique and I want to share and I can I can I can build build on. Yes, I was just realizing that it's also very important to keep moving, like what Mo just said, because most of my ideas, they come to my mind when I'm on the subway, actually, when mm -hmm. I'm listening to music and when I'm seeing people, when I'm seeing vivid things in my life, then there are suddenly there are just like these, these things where I'm like, yes, I should totally go with that certain movement and, and or phrase or something. And that's, yeah. It's mostly not when I'm sitting down and I'm like, okay, now I have to be creative. But when I'm around living at a club, I don't know, anywhere. And then right. write it down quickly. Usually well, actually, in the unexpected situations, it comes up, right? Yes. Yeah, but moving, actually moving helps. Or for, for me, at least, when, when, I'm, uh, when I'm when I start walking or being on train or uh, yeah. whatsoever, but, but actually moving. When we are working and um, on, on on stories uh, on, on a new script or whatsoever, um, and we're always in the same room looking on the same whiteboard, we're always stuck at at one time, and then we just have to go for a walk, and um, that always helps to just keep on moving. Yeah, I was listening to Edgar Reitz. Do you know him? A really famous German filmmaker who just received a Lola for his lifetime achievement. <laughs> and uh, he, I think he said that his father or his uncle, but something close to him was a really, really good storyteller from uh, in the village he was from. And he was someone who was uh, just checking the train um, tracks, I think. Tracks, sort of, yeah. yeah. Yeah, every day. So he had to walk the whole day. And um, every time he came up with a new story, he was just walking on his own through the landscape, but uh, he was a really good storyteller because he right. had so much time walking. I love this. So I think we can take this one as an advice to actually step outside, to keep moving, uh, to, you know, focus on the environment, be open-minded, become aware of the senses on how we experience it. And then we can bring in this creativity and this energy into the artwork. Thank you so much for being here today. It was really great. And I can't work for the upcoming projects. Yes, me too. Thank you for having us again. Yeah, thank you so much. Oh, and very interesting also to hear from the musician and artist uh, actors' uh, view. Absolutely, like because I think film, music, and dance are very specific on its own, so it differs, but still somehow it's sort of related. So the comparison was great. I, I loved having both of you together. Yeah, I didn't find it too different actually. Just to like like uh, hearing you talking about. 
how you have a technique and how you can learn and adapt and um, also try to find something in yourself you want to tell, you want to express and to make it worth just for yourself or just if it could be one person or something in society you want to change. But um, yeah, sounds good. good. Absolutely. Good start. Thank you so much. Thank you. so so much for tuning in today i hope you enjoyed it just as much as i did i found it very inspiring actually talking to yeah not just to my high school friends but specifically talking about topics that we usually do not talk about like inspiration the personal perception of senses and i highly advise you to follow milena in stepping back to pause to observe people walking and moving and then becoming aware of the differences Allow yourself not only the time to pause and to be present, but also to fail. Don't be too hard on yourself. And always be mindful. Thank you so much again for tuning in. Follow and subscribe on Spotify, Apple, Google Podcasts, whichever medium you prefer. Leave us a review, that would mean a lot to us. And we can't wait for you to follow us on social media on Five Senses Journey for more inspiration and more daily input. Thank you so much, have a lovely day and stay mindful.